and you just leave it until it turns black and then coat it one more time. So again, the advantage would be if we have a project in late fall, we could go ahead and treat all the openings, treat all the expansion joints, virtually seal up the building, then wait till spring, come back and clean the surface of the sheathing and go ahead and apply the backstop if that's what's necessary. Even if you wanted to, let's say if, if it's late fall and you've got temperature conditions, in two hours that material can be dry. The nice thing about that is I could go ahead and make that joint weather tight and come back and apply the backstop in the spring if that's what's necessary. So you've got a lot more options with aqua flash than you do with the flashing tape. Okay? Then we'll go ahead and treat the opening. If anybody has any questions, by the way, just speak up. But typically what you'll find is when you start at the sill, you treat the entire opening and then come out roughly two inches onto the face of the sheathing. This product cannot be used with a sheet type weather resistant barrier such as stucco wrap or Tyvek or something to that effect. We only can use this with the fluid applied backstop. And so if someone's doing residential, then we would, if you're using the sheet type product, we would have to use the flashing tape in conjunction with that, that stucco wrap. Okay. And the main difference between the flashing tape and that is just the 30 day? The 30 day labor is about the same. Your cost as far as materials is about half. But recognize what you'll find if you talk to any of your contractors, after they deal with flashing tape on a day like today and it sticks to itself and they end up cutting about half of a roll and throwing it away, it gets pretty expensive even the labor to install. And so you're not going to have that problem with this. All the firms, basically in our market, they don't even use flashing tape unless they absolutely have to because of the sheet type weather resistant barrier. Okay? So you can just tuck it into the opening. And again, you'll notice by just having your gloves, then you can just take your brush and immediately tuck it right into the corners. Get the jams on each side. And then I like to use scissors because if, if your knife blade gets dull, then it won't bend or it won't cut like it should and it'll, it'll actually pull the mesh. Same way with your flashing tape. Then you can just take your brush again. Now the question comes up a lot of times, can everyone see the edge or the exposed edge of the sheathing where you've got the gypsum core? You take, if you take that flashing tape and try to get it to stick, it's not going to stick to that gypsum core. The question comes up, if you look real close, can you see a little bit of a bubble along that edge? That's normal and it should be anticipated. It's not going to stick completely to that surface. And so what you'll find is that by coating it the last time, that's what gives you your, your monolithic barrier. Okay? And so that's important to recognize. There's a couple different ways to do it. Tom likes to cut the pieces of mesh like this. Once you treat that, come in and coat it again, and then just put a diagonal piece, much like we do our standard detail mesh when we're applying our base coat. And that basically just reinforces that little corner. And so you can see there's just about no way that you cannot use your hands. And so you just got to make sure that you go through and treat it in that fashion. Okay? Then you treat the jam next. Take the height of the jam, add four inches to it so it turns two inches onto the sill. Two inches onto the head. What you'll find as far as labor, the question comes up and your contractors will be asking, if I'm trying to estimate how much time it's going to take per window, it takes approximately 30 minutes per window once you start for one guy. And that's typically a 4x4 four four window or less. If you get to larger windows, then you're going to have to increase that. So in other words, let's say if you've got one guy that all he's doing is treating windows all day long, then he's going to do approximately 16 in one man day. And so they can go through. How many window openings do you have? Why is that critical? 
A lot of the contractors will bid the job per square foot. What happens if there's 400 windows versus 100? That's a significant difference in labor. So recognize that when you actually go through and do the estimation for this type of system, they need to make sure that they count the number of penetrations and then use approximately 30 minutes. Now, if they've never done it before, they need to increase that 45 minutes to an hour. There's a learning curve until they figure out the process. You know, just like pre-cutting all the pieces. I wouldn't even start until all the pieces are pre-cut. So you just grab the piece and go. So the ones that are doing it on a daily basis, they're figuring 30 minutes per window opening, a 4x4 four four window or less. Okay. Next step is then just go into the, the jam, lay it into the opening. Then once you get it in place, then just take your brush again. Then take your scissors, do your two cuts, so then you can see things just start flowing together once you just get the process down, okay? And then typically when I'm doing the opening before I put my last coat over the top of it, now I'll go ahead and lay it all in and then come back and, and get it. As you can see, the one on the top is a little bit more difficult as far as placement. That's why it's easier to work with two people. And again, it's just a scissor cut. Then what you'll see at that point, then you don't have any little holes right at the corner. And then at this point, this is your second coat. And you just, just make sure you got the mesh completely covered. And at that point, wait at least 30 minutes or it turns black, just coat it one more time. But typically what most firms will do, they'll treat as many openings and then that